and then we had it down kind of low. Good morning. Good morning. eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> it's Thursday. We're well into this now. God, those nights are awful. Um, it is a huge pleasure to be here this morning to introduce the first artburst. And I'm Lori Richard, by the way, from the <laughs> Contemporary Art Center. <laughs> Stewart, uh, we are really lucky to have her in New Orleans. Um, I personally feel very honored to work with her um, on a lot of levels. She's a dance artist with a, a deep intelligence and <coughs> a poet. She's an organizer as well as a maker. Um, she's spent a lot of time in the Northwest and also worked a lot in Germany and the UK. But when she's here, we're really happy to have her. So um, glad to introduce you all to her this morning. Thanks.
Good morning, everyone. Let's give Shannon Stewart another huge thank you for her work. Okay, so Steve and I are going to get into it really quickly today. Um, we're going to have the in the work session. Um, and for those of you, well, who don't know me, my name is Katherine Grabowski. I'm with the Arab American National Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, right adjacent to Detroit. Whoop. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so just to uh, re-describe in the works, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, okay. Sorry. Sorry. You're speaking up. Um, so In the Works is a lively forum, let's make sure to keep it lively, uh, for conference attendees to share brief 60 second presentations, 60 seconds, can then everyone repeat that after me, 60 seconds, okay very good, so Steve will be timing you and I will be uh, graciously and kindly pushing things along, okay. Um, so you'll be describing new projects at any stage of development. Um, it's an opportunity for everyone, including artists, presenters, colleagues, and funders, to discuss new commissions, creative works, organizational initiatives, opportunities, or other projects that may be in need of collaboration. Um, producers, presenters, or assistants. Okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I will be naming five people at a time. And what I'll ask for those five people to do is to line up here on the ramp um, and to make sure to reintroduce yourself when it's your turn to share. Again, you will be timed. How much time will you have? OK, really good. You guys are sharp this morning. And, um, and then after those four of those people go, I'll name another five. So just sort of be ready if you signed up for In the Works. Um, there is also some time left to sign up if you're interested and didn't get a chance to sign up. Um, so Brittany in the back, can Brittany raise your hand? Yep, you can sign up with Brittany um, if you haven't signed up yet, okay? All right, so without further ado, we'll get started. So the first five people we have, Nick, I think it's Slee or Sly, Nick Sly. Um, The Seldoms, is that, yeah, The Seldoms, Bob Martin, DJ, and Dancing Grant, Grands, Grounds, Dancing? Okay, great. So can everyone line up, please? Where's Christina Wong when you need her this morning? Yes. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nick Sly. I'm one of the directors of a company from New Orleans, Louisiana called Mondo Bizarro. Really great to see everyone. Uh, two things that I'd just like to briefly mention. One is that we continue to tour our 2017 Creation Front project, The Way at Midnight, um, that was co-commissioned by Double Edge Theater, Clear Creek Creative, and Seven Stages. So we are moving that and also working on a number of different projects here. Um, one of which is a large-scale project called Invisible Rivers. And um, it's looking at the ways in which the systems and structures of control that it takes to wrangle the Mississippi have shown up in the interior territories of experience of the people. And it's asking this question about um, how are we ready to rewild the land when we haven't sufficiently rewilded ourselves. Um, it's a looking at trying to create a structure where there's a real micro entry point to this question about the climate, um, which seems to be pretty huge right now. Um, so that is going to take the form of some walks along the ancestral paths of rivers in New Orleans and throughout southeast Louisiana. It's also going to take the form of some floating performances where we take performances and put them on water. Holler at me. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hello. I'm Lynn Fisher for the Seldoms Dance Company from Chicago. Flow is the Seldom's new multimedia dance theater work about climate instability, vanishing polar ice, rising sea levels, extreme weather, the tension between denial and evidence, and adaptation and resilience. Flow embodies the fragmentation of our global conversation on climate change, 
from anti-science conspiracy theories to the very real urgent impacts of global warming. The world of flow is an iceberg calving, leaving individuals stranded on their own flow at sea and at risk of melting altogether. The artistic team is Carrie Hansen, Seth Bockley, Bob Faust, Mikhail Fixel, uh, Livy Passere, and Julie Ballard. The flow will premiere at the Union Theater at UW-Madison, Wisconsin in January and has a run the, at the Art Institute of Chicago in April on Earth, uh, beginning on Earth Day. Um, the company is looking for residency work and performance engagements. Thank you very much, and please see me, Lynn Fisher, Frontier Arts, if you want to talk about this more. Good morning, NPN. My name is Bob Martin. Um, I'm with Clear Creek Creative in Rockcastle County, Kentucky, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, thankful to NPN to be a Creation Development Fund awardee in the cohort this year. Um, I'm here representing a piece called EZEL, Ballad of a Landman. There's some information um, in the back. We're looking for presenting partners for long-term collaborations. Um, EZEL is an environmental, cultural, and spiritual parable uh, derived from living in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, one man um, seeking to make sense of time, place, and condition in which we live in. Ezel's choices, traumas, ancestors, and more intersect with themes of domination, resilience towards liberation as he seeks to take advantage of anticipated fracking boom and the opportunity to reconnect with the people and land of his raising. This is a food event, it's a journey through the woods, um, and it's a, hopefully a long-term collaboration with artists and presenters looking to explore the intersectionality of climate crisis and all the domination behaviors that we're enculturated to perpetrate. So hope to connect with you more on this. Bob Martin, thank you very much. Good morning, NPN folks. Welcome to New Orleans. Uh, my name is DJ, as some of you may have already known. Our current project is the Chapatula Street Flood Wall. Uh, thanks some of you for grabbing the free t-shirts on the table. Yes, they were free. I'm glad y'all finally took them all up. Um, right now, we're looking for an administrative assistant. Uh, as I have recently moved to Oahu, Hawaii, my business partner could use like some administrative help. Looking for some folks to help out with grants, whether you're local or national. We're not looking for artists yet. We will let you know. We need some artists to come out and help us paint. Um, we also have this lovely, lovely uh, activity book that we made to help raise some funds. It's our interpretation of 300 years of New Orleans history. Once again, I'm DJ Pate. Holla at your boy. Just to name the next five, we have Ashley Del Toyos, uh, Jen Maxi, Sharon Williams, Francine Sheffield, and Sean Dorsey. Please line up, thank you. And be sure to speak uh, closely into the mic. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Laura Stein from Dancing Grounds. We're a community dance organization in New Orleans. We work with young people and adults. <clears throat> Today I wanna to talk to you about our Dance for Social Change program. It's led by New Orleans teenage artists, dancers, poets, musicians, visual artists, Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant young people. And this year they're focusing their efforts to look at gentrification and displacement and how it's affecting their lives and how they wanna see this issue addressed in the future. So they're presenting a festival at the Contemporary Arts Center, thank you, March 28th, 29th. Um, so one thing I'm looking for is just anyone who's done artistic work around this issue of gentrification and displacement would love to just chat and hear what your approach has been also, our young people really want to tour and travel. So if you know any youth performance festivals, um, opportunities for presenting, exchange in other cities, come find me. Again, I'm Laura from Dancing Grounds. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Ashley DeHoyes, and I'm with Diverse Works, and I have here with me my name is Virginia Grice. I'm the writer and creator of Rascos Asiáticos, which was commissioned by the National Performance Network that will premiere in 2020 at Diverse Work in CalArts Center for New Performance. Uh, the Chinese legislation, uh, the, the Chinese Exclusion Act was the first immigration law to target a group by nationality, effectively pushing the Chinese into Mexico. So the piece is about the Chinese in Mexico, it's a dinner, it's a performance, it's an installation, and we're traveling it to different cities to uncover 
what are the stories and the histories of the Chinese in each of those locations. So we'll be in California first, Houston next, and we're looking for our next presenters after that. And the, the performance actually also comes with a companion writing workshop called These Are My Papers. And These Are My Papers is our efforts to document our own histories and our own stories. Thank you. Come and see us if you're interested in learning more about the project or interested in uh, bringing it to your city. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Maxey. I'm the Assistant Director of Programs at the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles. Thank you. I just want to call out four NPN connected projects that we have in the works for the next year. The first is Christina Wong for Public Office coming in February. And that's a result of me seeing Christina and meeting her last year at this conference. The second one is Marika Splint, artist Marika Splint, whose interrogation of borders all over the world. She has a theatrical piece that we're also presenting in February. Uh, the third one is we're honored to host Sandglass Puppet Theater, yay, Sandglass, uh, in April for their presentation of Babylon, a story about refugees. Um, and then finally, the Anan Ananya Dance Theater, we are co-commissioners with the Bates Dance Festival for her new piece, Agun. She's looking for more commissioners for this piece. She's coming to us in October of uh, 2020, when we will also have an Ai Weiwei exhibition. So if anybody has any juicy ideas about that, political dissent, and you know, uh, anyway. Thank you very much. Always so grateful to be here. What's good? Um, my name is Sharon Nairi Williams. I'm the executive director for the Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas out of Seattle, Washington. Yeah, yeah, we're a black organization that presents um, black arts and cultural events. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about me. I am a storyteller. I have a show called Dare to Claim the Sky, which is a solo performance that will be up in Seattle if you're in town from February 6th to February 9th at ACT. Theater, it is welcoming you into my proverbial, per, per, yeah, that word, into my living room of faith. I'm talking about faith, race, religion, and what it means to be black in America. So holla at me if you want your life changed, your audience life changed. I am ready to change the world one story at a time. If you feel me, say yeah. hard to follow that one. Um, <laughs> my name is Francine Sheffield. I am the founder and CEO of Sheffield Global Arts Management. It is a management company that represents dance companies. Um, they are people of color. They are women choreographers. Um, the one project that I would like to talk about um, is Public Enemy, which is an NP NDP funded project with Dance I Qual. He is looking for presenters and partners to flesh out this project, which um, uh, incorporates information about social justice through the juvenile delinquent system. He would like to do a project, a dance project, as well as go out into the community and talk to the social issues about, uh, <laughs> excuse me, social justice and for um, juvenile delinquency. He really wants to change these kids' lives. He really wants to go in and give them more skills once they come and re-enter into society. So that's the project. Um, if you are interested in that, come look for me. Thank you. Uh, to name the next five, we have Diana E. Jordan, Pioneer Winter, Rosa Nade Garmendia, uh, Shoshana Bass and Edisa Weeks. Good morning. Hello, I'm Sean, and I'm the artistic director of Sean Dorsey Dance from San Francisco, and I'm looking for presenters, co-commissioners, and money for my new full evening work, The Lost Art of Dreaming. The Lost Art of Dreaming explores expansive trans and queer futures disrupting long-entrenched, fatalistic American constructs that deny us the space to even dream about our own futures. This dance theater work will premiere in spring 2021 before touring through 2024. Uh, the work's being commissioned by Dance Play, Seven Stages, Queer Cultural Center, American Dance Festival, and Velocity Dance Center. So far, you are welcome to join. 
Like all my works, I will create the lost art of dreaming through a national community engagement process. I'll host Dream Labs, creative spaces where trans and GNC and queer folks are uh, supported to dance, write, sing, craft, or creatively express and think expansively about ourselves, our bodies, and our future. The work will tour with Dream Labs and lots of other amazing stuff. And if you'll be in New York during APOP, please come see our newest work, Boys in Trouble, at New York Live Arts as part of Live Artery. Thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Diana Elizabeth Jordan. I am a solo artist. I'm the founder of the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, an entertainment production company that does work around disability, inclusion, and intersectionality. I'm looking for supporters and collaborators to develop a new work called 28 Days in April, which is about the largest political sit-in by disability activists in April, uh, that was in April 1977. Um, I will be here only today. Um, I'm leaving tonight, but if you want to check me out, I'm also doing a workshop at 11.15, but find me, and you can find me at the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe.com. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Pioneer Winter. I'm the choreographer of Birds of Paradise. Uh, it's a dance and physically integrated work in collaboration with Pioneer Winter Collective, an all-queer, physically integrated company of allied bodies ages 24 to 63, commissioned by the Adrian R. Center for the Performing Arts, where it'll premiere October 2020 with a, a work in progress showing in April. Uh, Birds migrates beyond an abridged truth that memorializes efforts of some and erases others, and it's formed under a canopy of oral history and deeply rooted social practice it's motivated by forced anonymity of queer resistance. I'm looking for residency opportunities uh, to develop the work outside of Miami so that perspectives within and beyond my community are implicated and explored and presenting partners invested in new voices in contemporary dance. Um, Birds is supported by NIFA's NDP grant, uh, MAP Fund, and the Arsh Center. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosa Naday Garmendia. I am a visual artist. I live and work in Miami, and I've been working on a project since 2014 that documents the lives of African-American men and women killed by police. And I come to this work from my own um, experience, experience with um, colonization. I am originally from Cuba, a place and uh, a country and a people who've been fighting to be independent of the United States government for the last 60 years. Um, this piece is titled Rituals of Commemorations. It is going to be traveling um, in the next two years. It's part of an exhibition um, organized by Rosie Gordon Wallace and Diaspora by Cultural Arts Incubator. It's titled Intersectionality, Diaspora Art from the Creole City. And I'm looking um, to integrate an aspect of performance to really deepen um, and the, you know, the cause of police brutality imperialism and the problems with systematic um, and with capitalism. So if anybody's interested, um, I came here last year and the work that you guys do is very bold and powerful. So I'm looking to integrate some of that into this installation. Thank you. Hello. My name is Edissa Weeks. I'm the choreographer and maker for Delirious Dances. And we're working on a project called Three Rights, Life, Liberty, Happiness, which interrogates why life and liberty were included in the Declaration of Independence and how they manifest in the body and for whom are these rights guaranteed. And uh, Life is a performance installation of, uh, that asks how can corporations and citizens be better stewards of this world. Liberty is also a performance installation of 1,865 roots and um, interrogates or is a meditation on the black experience in America. Um, happiness is about tapping into catharsis and joy. And it includes a live band, the Occidental Brothers Dance Band International that do a mix of uh, high life and suku music. And um, let's see, we, the work is being produced by Mariah Weathers and presented by 651 Arts in their new space in Brooklyn, New York in October of 2021. 
and we're looking for presenting partners for our upcoming NDP application and also residency support for life. <laughs> Thank you. Next five, Anastasia Norayos, uh, Nigel Brown, Dalak Bratu Wait and Terenx Moore, Ananya Shaturgia, and Camila Romero. Good morning. I every year forget to bring a puppet with me up here because I feel way more comfortable behind the puppet, but I can speak to you <laughs> right face to face. So we are Sandglass Theater, and my name is Shoshana Bass, co-artistic director. And I'm Elisa Mello, the new managing director. Which is very exciting for us, and I highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> it's the first time for us to have a managing director. We, as um, Jen already announced, we're currently touring Babylon, which is our work around refugees and asylum seekers. It is an NTP-funded residency, and it is also a Doris Duke subsidized residency. And we um, tour in a residency model. We work together with an arts venue, and we also partner with a local resettlement agency or, or uh, UNHCR chapter. So we're really excited about areas in the country that have active um, chapters and are really working with, with these kind of themes. We have a new partner piece for that piece called Rock the Boat, which is for young children. Um, so come to talk to us. And also come talk to us about visiting a rural area. OK, thank you. Just to make sure, do we have Anastasia here? Um, do we have Nigel here? And do we have Camilo here? Yeah, OK. Um, so I'm going to call two more to line up, um, Stephanie Reed and Eddie Masonet. We are a trusted trip. TFT. We are directed by Roberta Uno. Yes. Commissioned by NPN. You speak. NIFA. MCX Shoutstown. A Living Word Project. In NIFA. Miami, Miami Life. Hey. Yay. Hey. OK. 12 years ago, I was arrested for four stems of magic mushrooms. I was forced into a court-ordered drug rehabilitation program. I was told I was a criminal, a felon, addict, told I would be these things for life. Uh, I was told that I was to be shamed into silence. Instead, I spoke out in a solo play, and now we've created an, a concept musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I am not done speaking through this story, speaking through song, speaking through text, and most importantly, Look for me with the hair and Jonas Sada. So unfair to follow that. Um, my name is Anunna Ananya Chatterjee. Thank you. As the country of my birth and the country I live in devolves into a madness and what has been described as an aspirational hatred, uh, I am uh, creating a work called Agun, which means fire. Um, it is an exploration of borders, boundaries, home, and belonging. Um, it's being created in collaboration with Sharon Bridgeport as dramaturg <laughs> and developed at Mansi. It is an NPN uh, creation fund recipient uh, with uh, Jen Maxey at Skirball Center, uh, Bates Trans Festival, and Utah Presents, and it also has NDP support. I hope to, the Damien Strange is the composer, and I'm making it with my company of women and friends of color, and we hope to explore the kind of surreal imagery that was part of the folk tales of my growing up, and lots of magic spells. Looking for more commissioners, thank you. Good morning, buenos dias. My name is Camilo Romero. This is my first NPN. Thank you. 
Uh, I don't think it was a victory right here, so you say, so I hope it's not my last MTN either. And I come from Chocó, Colombia, the west coast of Colombia, that resembles a lot like Bobancha, actually. And our project and our work is called Regeneración. It's a word in Spanish that means regeneration. And it's focused on healing trauma, of which you might imagine Colombia has suffered quite a bit of it, through storytelling. Our first project was children's books. We should continue to write based on the story of all young people who have been connected to the conflict, both here and in the diaspora. And that has spread to other places, including the US, which in its own way is certainly dealing with trauma. And we've been doing now speaking tours. In fact, we'll have a workshop here on Saturday at the Rosa Keller Community Library to which you all are invited. And the idea is to talk about conflict and trauma in a way that uses art. It's something that's new to me. I've been working as a lawyer the last two years in Colombia. But I've realized that to actually touch those places that can affect change here and here, we do it much better through art. So the invitation is for each of you. Gracias. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Reed, and I'm representing the New Orleans Accordion Festival. Um, we um, are umbrellaed under NTN, so we can operate as a not-for-profit. And we launched our inaugural festival in 2018 and um, with the purpose of celebrating the span, the range of music. It's, uh, accordion is the people's instrument. And uh, this biennial festival, we'll have our next one in 2020. And one thing we'd like to do, along with celebrating the accordion, it's of course it's musical traditions, we also like to um, get local composers to arrange original pieces for an accordion orchestra that we're putting together. Super excited about that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, going to name five more. Uh, Sarah Greenbaum, Andrea Asa, Lynn Johnson and Ryan Johnson, Ben Levine, and Richard Newman. Cool. Good morning. My, uh, my, hi. my name is Eddie Masonette. I am a resident artist with the Theater Offensive in Boston, Massachusetts. Yes. Um, I am a co-producer with Tatiana Hill of an oral history-based um, devised work about the Boston housing crisis, home, belonging, gentrification, and displacement. My co-producer and I are heading an entirely queer POC team with trans POC representation, myself included. Um, whew, yes. Um, the work will be finished June 2020. Um, we are looking for mentorship, kindred artists doing similar work, um, and presenters who might want to help us tour it. We are working with oral history interviews, transcribing them, they're being transcribed as we speak right now. Isn't that exciting? And we will be writing a play. So it will be done June 2020. My name is Eddie Masonette, and I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts. Please find me. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Greenbaum. I'm the associate curator at Dance Place in Washington, DC where I get to work with Christopher K. Morgan almost every day as an administrator, but it is my great joy to hype his work as an artist in this moment right now. Uh, uh, Christopher K. Morgan's company, TKMA, in 2016, prior to his role as the executive artistic director at Dance Place, was commissioned by the Maui Arts and Culture Center and Dance Place to create Pohaku. In this work, Christopher diverged from his standard role as the choreographer of a contemporary dance ensemble to create a personal solo that addressed his indigenous Hawaiian heritage and separation, separation from his ancestral land. Through the work, he has explored the aesthetic and social relationship between his Western, modern, and indigenous Hawaiian dance lineages. This work is also still touring, FYI. <laughs> now continuing similar investigations with his company, Native Intelligence, Innate Intelligence, incorporates modern dance, hula, Hawaiian chant, and live music to examine home, belonging, and the origins of instinct. This project is the recipient of an NTN Creation and Development Fund and a NIFA National Dance Project Award. Um, if you want to come see it, the premiere at Dance Place is May 2 and 3, 2020. And come find me or Christopher to learn more. Thank you. Good morning, y'all. I'm Andrea Asaf with Art to Action, Inc. 
Thank you, thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to NPN because last year I stood up here and say, I need this project to get a commission, y'all, and NPN made it happen thanks to uh, the Arab American National Museum and the Con Center for Contemporary Arts here in New Orleans. And um, so Drone is the new project I'm working on. It's also received a NIFA uh, National Theater Project. And yes, very excited. And with the wonderful artists who are in the room, Dora Arriola is movement director, Nick Sly and Kathy Randall's performing in the piece and an incredible ensemble of musicians and performers. And what I want to ask you for is, um, this is a large scale, ambitious, technological, transdisciplinary performance project. Um, and so I want to ask for development residencies that can house getting the entire ensemble of people all over across the country and as far as London together. Um, and ah, technology and space for movement presenters in 2021, interactive web designers and anybody who knows about working with engineers and drone technology, bye. Do you ever feel like you're jerking off into the wind and nobody gives a shit? If so, I Made This Dance and Nobody Cares But You is the project for you. Hi, I'm Ben Levine, and you may know me as the production manager of NPN's Live and On Stage or as the director of production at Dance Place, but I'm up here as the producing director of Extreme Length Productions. Um, I Made This Dance and Nobody Cares But You is a series of performances for a single audience person at a time. The performance opened the Dance Place season with uh, transforming seven spaces around our building, giving 150 patrons a singular audience experience. So I've just scared away all the presenters. One audience person at a time, seven spaces. This sounds like a financially doomed logistical nightmare. But I'm here to promise you that I am a dream to work with. And um, <laughs> since I have decades of experience from the presenter side, I'm an expert at dreaming big and compromising and collaborating wildly to make magic. Please come find me or message me on Grindr to talk more about Extreme Lengths Productions and I Made This Dance and Nobody Cares But You. Thanks. Okay. I'm Richard Newman, co-director of the Hinterlands in Detroit. From 1930 to 1970s, scores of white Appalachian workers traveled up the hillbilly highway to Detroit for factory work. Despised by their northern cousins, over a few generations, many migrants distanced themselves from their rural traditions, disappearing into the identity of white Midwesterners. Will You Miss Me uses the hinterland's heightened physical and vocal processes, along with a public practice taking place at flea markets and other locations to dive into this complicated history of white identity, class, and assimilation in the Rust Belt by trusting the pathways of songs and stories through the past process of migration, the same path traveled by Hinterland's co-director, Liza Bilby's family, as they migrated from West Virginia to Flint, Michigan. We'll be premiering this work in 2020, and we have some support from the Knight Foundation uh, to begin this process, but we are looking for partners and co-commissioners specifically in other Rust Belt cities with similar histories. Thank you. So I'm gonna name the next five. Lisa Dionne Moore and Katie Pearl. Corian Ellison. Caitlin McGowan. I'm sorry, I can't read your handwriting, but Caitlin. Tommy Sulati Shepard. Christopher Mo K. Morgan. And Linda Paris Bailey. Listen, soul define, bring the rhythm to blow your mind. Blending beats, bringing heat all in time. Sounds so sweet when we rock on the beat. Shuffle, pull back, slide, make the rhythm complete. Um, making music with our hands on our feet. Clap to the beat, get up out your seat. Fusing rhythms from across the globe. Tap dances, that thing that'll never get old. Hello, everybody. My name is Quinn Johnson, and this is Ryan Johnson, and we are 
soul define we use percussive dance to raise awareness about social and economic issues of directly affecting people of color we use percussive dance to entertain the masses educate communities and empower youth as artists in residence in dance place in washington dc we are committed to creating high quality immersive performances arts integrated curriculum and policies that advance the visibility of percussive dance so we are looking for presenters to bring us to their cities funders to support our arts education programs and residency opportunities outside of the dc area thank you Hello, uh, we are Pearl Demore, a tall and short interdisciplinary performance making duo. <laughs> we collaborate with artists across disciplines to make performance both in theaters and sometimes in spaces like uh, office buildings, bridges, or 40 acre meadows. Um, two things, first of all, we have a book out on our Milton project. Uh, when we visited five small towns named Milton in the U.S. and collaborated with them on artworks, conversation, and a play, you can buy it from us or 53rd State Press. Um, second, we have a new show that's premiering in Boston with the ART next September. It's called Ocean Filibuster, and it's a solo show with a large-scale video projection and a choir. And in it, uh, the... Um, how did we describe it? Oh yeah, in which the ocean itself must stand in front of a global governing body and plead for its life. It's, yeah, it's performed by uh, the amazing Jen Kidwell. There's music by Skip Shirey and an interactive intermission that lets you get up close and personal with the ocean itself. And so we need you to come see the show in Cambridge uh, and we'd also love some touring partners so we can extend the life of the show. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Corey and Elisor. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I work with Seven Stages, doing uh, educational outreach programming, and I'm tired. Um, I do a lot of things. I'm a drag queen. I am a dancer, a teacher, choreographer, a performance artist, activist, and a lot of my work is rooted, based in identity and self pol uh, body politics. And right now I just want to do things that I think are beautiful and interesting to me. And so with this next project that I'm working on, it's called Charmed Ones. And I'm sort of taking back my charmedness and sort of presenting that to the world and saying that as a black Southern queer activist that I don't have to shout all the time. Sometimes I can just be beautiful and I can share that beauty with the world. And so that's what I'm trying to do right now. Um, I'm uh, finishing this dance theater installation experience that will be performed at Seven Stages uh, fall 2020, maybe. Uh, no, it will be. Uh, and I'm looking for commissioning partners, looking to apply for the creative fund grant thing. And I'm a really nice and fun person, so you can just come and say hi. I have got a minute, just a little minute. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Paris Bailey, and I am, um, thank y'all friends. I am uh, before you as an artist, and I'm gonna read because I have two projects that I want to uh, tell you about. I am now a solo playwright and performer, and I am collaborating with Eric Bass of the Sandglass Theater. After years of knowing each other as theater colleagues, Linda and Eric discovered by chance that they grew up only a few miles apart at around the same time in Flushing, New York. Though their light paths took them in different directions and to different parts of the globe, they once again find themselves in similar place in the process of handing their theater companies to a younger generation of leaders and facing the brink of leadership succession. Flushing is a journey that the audience takes with Linda and Eric uh, uh -oh. from present to past to present and engage with issues of race and legacy and identity. Together we look into the abyss, sometimes from the edge of a South American volcano, sometimes from the window of a speeding subway train, sometimes through our parents' nightmares to connect with and where we come from and how we got here. We are looking for, stay still. Okay, so go on Creative Capital's website and look at my presentation called Yankee Bajan. That's the other piece that I'd like to tell you about. Thank you. Thank you. 
Aloha, y'all. I'm Christopher from Dance Place. If you haven't noticed, we're trying to make a big impression here by bringing a strong contingent of folks, and I want to highlight that because it's super intentional. We're in our nation's capital, and we have the power to affect serious change. So join us on that journey. You already met our, our artists in residence, Soul Define, Ryan and Quinn. I can't endorse them enough. You might have seen our art burst uh, yesterday with Sarah Beth Oppenheim. I also highly endorse her. Here for the first time is Haley Cutler from Darling Dance. I hope you get to hear from her in a moment. Hit her up. You already met Ben. He spoke for himself. Shannon Quinn is here for her first time. She's the artistic director of Revision Dance Company, one of our resident companies that works with physically integrated populations and does incredible contemporary dance work. She's sitting right there next to Ben. You can maybe via Grindr you can find her, via Ben. Um, so all of this is super intentional. We're trying to elevate the DC dance scene and make um, take advantage of the powerful position we hold in our nation's capital to F some shit up, because it needs it. So join us on that journey, and you can join me very directly by working with me. I'm hiring. I need an external relations director that brings together the voice of our communications department and our fundraising and development team. I need a really great person, and I feel like they might be in this room. Good morning. My name is Tommy Shepard. Hi, I'm Caitlin Lagoff. And we are the Alphabet Rockers. Come up with me and do a uh, rocker handshake. We're going to say rock star. Thank you. Alphabet Rockers makes music that makes change. We've been doing it for about 12 years. And we've been doing it with a community of children, uh, not just four. That's right. And um, our latest work is called The Love and was just nominated for the Grammy Award this year. Which is crazy because we uh, made an intersectional album that centers transgender, non-conforming, two-spirit, non-binary uh, voices of children. Children are leading us, and it's w one of the feedback we've got from it is what a delight to hear queer voices telling us that we're doing this together. And Alphabet Rockers consists of myself, Caitlin, and four youngsters, three 11-year-olds and one 12-year-old that we tour with. And what we're doing, we're looking for venues. We're looking for uh, presenters, places to spread this love and really get this message out to the world and let uh, people know that children are actually thinking about these things as well. Thank you. Thank you. So we have Shannon Quinn, Kim Yantis, Lynn Newman, the CAC, and Ben, I think it says Omar Pryor, but it's uh, from Kelly Strayhorn. My name is Shannon Quinn, and I'm the Education Director at Dance Place, uh, Washington, D.C., and I'm also the Artistic Director of Revision Dance Company. Uh, having danced with founding director Carla Perlow's company for years, I was gifted the incredible opportunity to carry on the legacy of Carla's dance company after her retirement uh, as a resident company of Dance Place. Bridging my education and artistic roles, I aim to find intersectionality of both my artistic practice through community engagement, our current project, Propelling Voice, uh, explores themes of individuality and community in an abstract scenic design of six dodecahedrons by the fabulous Ben Levine. Uh, we traveled the work to s the South African State Theater in uh, DC's sister city, Pretoria, South Africa, where Vision had the opportunity to explore the differences in the definitions of community across cultures. I'm looking to tour the work to your community uh, where Revision Six Dancers will perform alongside and collaborate with local intergenerational uh, community past. Talk to me after. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Kim Yantis uh, from Miami, Florida, and uh, I am a visual artist. I am a curator. I'm a costume designer, but you can't all have me. I'm also an arts grant writer. I am here to promote uh, today a collaborative project that I'm working on uh, with another artist in Miami, Lucinda Linderman, called Suiting Up for the Future. We are a sustainable uh, fashion show model that uh, pairs with scientists and communities to uh, make costuming that relates to sea level rise. We have a beautiful composter purse, flotation devices that are beautiful sculptures, upcycled wool suiting that is uh, non-gender specific, 
uh, and we're seeking other fashion show venues and scientists and organizations to partner with to make fashion shows within communities so we can talk about sustainability. Um, I posted a 115 chat if anyone is wants to discuss sea level rise and sustainable art making. Um, and please reach out to me with any questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lynn Newman. This is my first NPN conference, and I'm delighted to be here in what feels like a very active space. I'm based in Brooklyn. There is a place that's choking that we do not see. There is a place that is burning and we cannot breathe. There is a place that is flooding and we must flee. There is a place that's disappearing. There's a, pa a place that is scorched. And what happened to all the trees? God, it's hot in here. Liberate the Earth is an environmental justice performance tour that occurs in environmentally sensitive sites. And there are many across the country and there are many in your community. At each location, a guided participatory experience and performance occurs that illuminates both the history and the potentiality of a site and asks, what does this place need? At each location, we partner with environmental organizations, activists, and historians to put the tour together and create a narrative that collect, connects the sites, which can be as few as three and as many as six. It premieres in June with partners of the Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice and Gowanus Canal Conservancy. I'm Lynn Newman. I work under the platform of Artichoke Dance Company at the intersection of performance, climate change, and civic action. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have Aurora Neyland, um, Danny Terrell, Christina Wong, Diana Wyan, Wyan um, Astrid Kemmerling, and Naka Dance Theater. Hello, everybody. My name is Ben Pryor. I am coming to you today as a senior producer for Kelly Strayhorn Theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm um, here to tell you about a project by uh, a theater artist, Adil Mansour, uh, which is called Emigon. Uh, it's spelled A-M-M parentheses I, gone, G-O-N-E. So Emigon is a performance in the wake of Sophocles' Antigone as an apology to and from Adil's mother. The work is a solo lecture performance exploring queerness, the afterlife, and kinship using canonical texts, teaching from the Quran, and audio conversations between Adil and his mother. Uh, Antigone is a feminist, an agitator, and an anti-establishment revolutionary, a woman prioritizing her brother's burial over her own life. In this burial, Adil, uh, excuse me, in this binary, Adil sees uh, a way of understanding his mother, the social worker, the single mom, the devout Muslim. Since discovering Adil's queerness, his mother has turned towards her faith in an attempt to save him in the afterlife. Uh, in an effort towards healing, Adil has invited, him, uh, invited his mother to join him as a dramaturgical co-conspirator. Out of time. Um, KST is commissioning the work for a uh, February um, 21 premiere. I can tell you more without much pressure. My name is Christina Wong, and we live in times where politicians and artists have switched jobs. They now create the shock and spectacle that have us questioning reality. We now reclaim the quiet space for social change and truth. And frustrated that politicians were taking my job as a performance artist, I ran for office earlier this year and lost. Then I ran again, and I won. I am the elected representative of Subdistrict 5 Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council and within my first few months in office we voted to abolish ICE which was largely symbolic because Neighborhood Council cannot take down a federal agency. <laughs> Christina Wong for public office which premieres at the Skirball Center on February 7th is the most single most important show that you will book this year presenters and beyond. It is meant to to tour alongside the shenanigans leading up to the election and to comment on it. It talks about art as symbolism, politics as symbolism. I know it sounds kind of illegal to bring someone who's a real politician who has a campaign looking performance to your space, but don't worry, it's gonna be okay. Trust me, I'm a politician. My director, Diana Wyan, says this is my most mature work yet. 
I believe her. I'm mature now, everybody. I sewed my set myself. This is the greatest show I have ever made. Please bring a real politician to your space to do this. Christina Wong for public office. Thank you, America. Thank you. I need you as my hype woman, for real. Um, so, I'm Danny Terrell. I'm about to turn 50. I need somebody to go on an adventure with me. In the next five years, I'm going to create five major works for myself to celebrate my 50th birthday. First major work was done, Fat God. It's about HIV and AIDS. The epidemic started in 1981. Next work is untitled. It is about the life and death of my 12, my 13-year-old nephew and the life and death and life and death of my marriage. We still married. Um, we still marry, therapy. Um, and the last work that I'm presenting, um, this is all within 2021, Fat God is already done. 2021, I'm gonna be working with five uh, street dance uh, artists. They are all women, they are all of color. Um, we are creating new work to combat what street dance is with men, because men suck sometimes in street dance, if you know what I'm talking about. So, I need someone, producers, presenters, residencies, to go on this adventure. Yes, I can do it because I'm a bad bitch. So I can create five new works in five years. So I need someone to just help me out. If you are a musician that does gospel and house music, hit me up. That's it. Hi, my name is Diana Wyan. I am a theater artist from Los Angeles and the director of Christina's piece. Um, by show of hands, all who are able, uh, who out there knows or loves someone with diabetes? Cool, I won't ask you who has diabetes, but I do. Um, and it's actually one in 10 people in this country now, and it could be one in three by 2050 if we don't do something about it, according to the CDC. It is actually the largest epidemic that we face as a nation and as a global society. So when I heard that CDC statistic, I turned all of my work as a theater artist towards building a piece that with projections, live feed, Shakespeare, personal narrative and dance, blood sugar actually dispels the lies because sugar doesn't cause diabetes, but fat can. Uh, it also unearths the history that dates back to ancient Egypt, reveals the cost. It cost me $8,194 to stay alive every single year. Uh, it challenges all of the shame and the stereotyping that comes with this invisible disability. It challenges the binary of health and illness, and this work is ready to tour. Along the way, I showed, uh, pro showed it at Red Cat and Highways and NYU. It's been supported by the National Arts and Disability Council, and I'm looking for partners to share this very necessary work. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Astrid Kamerling, and um, I originated a project called the Walk Discourse. And the Walk Discourse is a public space laboratory. We unite walking, art, and civic discourse to invite participants to actively and playfully learn about the neighborhoods and the spaces that we live in. Um, right now, we are having a workshop come up on the Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. So I invite you all who are staying in town for a little bit longer to participate. Um, what I'm looking for right now are um, predominantly artists who are local who would love to participate, partner organizations, local walkers to participate, and funders. In the past um, two years, I have hosted the Walk Discourse in San Francisco, and I recently moved to New Orleans and brought the project with me. Um, in San Francisco, we were funded by um, Southern Exposure and uh, fiscally sponsored by the Intersection for the Arts, and um, it's a whirlwind to come and settle here, so thank you. Thank you. The next five is Najla Gatkin, Debbie Kajiyama, Kathy R.A. Noel, um, Indy Mitchell and Natalie Nia Falk, Layla Bonnie, uh, sorry, Liam Bonnie Gable, and George Lug. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Debbie Kajiyama, and I'm representing Naka Dance Theater this morning that I co-direct with Jose Navarrete. We are based in Oakland, California. 
Um, we are, the piece that we're working on right now is called Buscarte, Searching for You, and it's a performance work about forced disappearance based on the forensic anthropology investigations into the 43 disappeared students from Ayotzinapa, Mexico. Um, it's dance, story, there's an old-fashioned tape recorder, a huge plastic sheet, and a very sarcastic eagle character in the work. Our collaborators include Adria Adi, who does voice programming and processing for us, Noel Rodriguez from Grafica Urbana in Mexico City, um, who does some graffiti images and stop motion, uh, motion video, and uh, Omar Garcia, who is one of the survivors, uh, surviving students of the 43, who is giving contextualizing talks for us. We're looking for presenting partners and also just folks who would be interested in talking to us. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Nejla Yatkun. And in 2015, I took a project around the world into 20 countries, which was inspired by a residency uh, that I did with NPN. And I have a new project called The Other Witch. Um, this piece will premiere in Chicago in 2020, in the fall of 2020, and then travel to 10 countries around the world. The project is a multimedia and multilingual dance performance featuring contemporary dance, text, video, sound, and community participation. The piece is a departure from Mary Wigman's 1914 Hexen Tons, and I'll be exploring what happens when a witch reclaims otherness. Bir varmış, bir yokmuş, eine Hexe rüyalarımda. Supporters are Chicago Dance Makers Lab Award, Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, the Camargo Foundation, Three Arts Project, Pritzker Fund. We are looking for a technical residency, presenters in the USA for a 2020, and more funding. Hi, my name is Indy Mitchell. Hey, y'all, I'm Natalie Neofa. And we're the co-directors of Last Call. Last Call is an oral history and performance-based collective. Um, we, are, we do two creative outputs. The first one is our podcast, which you can find at lastcallnola.org. And we also do live performance, which you can see a little bit of tonight and live and on stage. Um, our first Foley production, Alleged Lesbian Activities, is currently available to tour. And we have NTP Subsidy, but that's not actually what we're here to talk about. So What we're here to talk about is our next initiative, which is doing oral history work with um, black, queer, and trans folks who are in pageant scene, pageantry scenes and adjacent communities. Um, our intention is to uplift stories of joy, celebration, and success, to add nuance to the already highly seen narratives of death, hardship, and struggle. We've already been interviewing elders in the pageantry community, um, and we'll continue to do so. So we are looking for funding. We are looking for spaces to create this work, so residencies outside of New Orleans. Uh, we're looking for development opportunities. Um, and if you know a current or previous title holder who would be interested in being interviewed, specifically people who are in the South, we would love to talk to them. Thank you. So help us preserve trans history in the South. <laughs> and thank you. Hello, my name is George Lug, and I'm a producer working with Emily Johnson, a um, choreographer who will speak to you later about her new project, and Faye Driscoll, who I am going to speak for since she's not here. Um, I want to talk to you about her newest work. It's the culmination of a trilogy called Thank You For Coming. Uh, Thank You For Coming Space is um, completed this spring and currently touring. Um, it is a shared rite of passage, an invocation of the transformative powers of presence and absence. It's a work built out of grief that was also described as a fierce proclamation of the ecstasy of living. Space unfolds within an intimate installation that is wired for sound and upheld by ropes, pulleys, the weights of others, the audience is engaged in supporting completely this work. Um, if you'd like to experience it, I invite you to come to Live Artery in January, the 8th through the 11th, where it will be presented, so I hope you see it there. Walker Wexner in the spring. I can give you lots more information about this wonderful artist. Thank you. Hi. 
<laughs> um, oh, I kind of want to take this out. I'm at a um, time where a lot of things feel really complicated for me, and one of them is saying my name. Um, so I am Liam Bonnie Gable, and so for those of you who know me, I have a new name. Um, so, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of other things that feel really complicated for me, and a lot of them are wrapped around gender, but what doesn't feel complicated for me right now is running in the woods <laughs> and looking at um, the animals that are there by my house um, where I'm living right now in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and I'm interested in chronicling these things that feel really complicated for me, a lot of them around this idea of like what is inside of me and what is outside of me and what do people see and what can they not see. Um, and thinking about this inside and outside binary that we've created in our culture and how that affects both the natural world and the trans experience. Um, and I'm interested in talking to people about that. I'm doing um, over 100 tiny interviews about gender and childhood, and I want to put those and the stories that I chronicle via audio inside of forests. So if you have a residency that is by a natu natural space, please talk to me. Um, we have Haley Cutler, Jose Torres Tama, Maria Bauman Morales, I think it's Catalin, L, I'm sorry, I can't read your handwriting, and Janet Wong. voice. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Randalls. I'm the artistic director of Art Spot Productions here in New Orleans. Welcome, y'all. And I'm also the co-director of The Graduates and the Drama Club at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women. Thanks to the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation, we received a grant to create the Life Quilt, which is the name of 107 women serving a life sentence in the state of Louisiana in 2017, uh, hand-sewed by black masking Indians with a beautiful image uh, created by Mike, B, by B. Mike in the center of it. We are touring that quilt and a performance accompanying it called Life about keeping the people who are serving life sentences alive in our hearts and our minds. Uh, looking for partners who, some of us want to abolish the system, some of us want to reform the system. Anybody who wants to do anything to uh, get rid of this fucked up justice system that we have in our country, talk to me. And uh, 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 if you want to write a letter to our governor, see me about uh, releasing the 14 women whose names are on his desk today. You want it on the stand or in your hand? Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm too short for it, I think. Hello. I'm Haley Cutler, and my dance company, Darling Dance, is Washington, D.C.'s very own raging feminist dance company. We make culturally responsive work, like Victor, which is ready to tour to your organization. Victor is a wild romp of a trio that addresses the political stripping of bodily autonomy highlighting shared trauma and the physicality of support. Victor is the defiling of a hot pink tinsel Christmas tree. It's a manic muttering of expletives. It's tender moments of touch and powerful throws of love. Throughout it all, the dancers remain unfazed by their public outbursts, daring the audience to accept their own voyeurism and vulnerability. Victor premiered earlier this year at Dance Place in our beloved hometown. We are seeking touring opportunities that allow us to share our creative philosophy, authentic movement rooted in personal and communal honesty. Uh, in studio and on stage through the leading of choreography workshops and performance presentations. Thank you, I'm Haley from Darling Dance. No. 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The Taco Truck Theater is a black and brown coalition with the amazing spirit of McIntyre, Jose Fermin Ceballos, Afro-Dominican Brothers. We've been rocking the house across the country. We rocked it out at Roots Week, Pangea World Theater, Living Arts of Tulsa. We want to come to a hungry barrio near you. We're challenging the anti-immigrant hysteria and selling tacos at the same time. We're doing it all, giving you food for thought, giving you provocative performance rituals. It's a performance ritual of reeling. I think we rocked it out here. Gracias, see me. I've got some fancy ass brochures. I'm just saying. Ow! Hi, my name is Katani Lukács. I am a concert pianist as a and a visiting professor at Tulane. My project, Rising Water, is fiscally sponsored by NPN. The Rising Water project will use music and poetry to increase a shared understanding of the human and environmental impact of climate change and inspire positive action. To do this, my voice and piano duo has commissioned 19 poets and composers from the Gulf South area. Our group of commissioned artists includes established and student composers, poets, and spoken word artists. We will also include in our roster of poets the winner of a poetry contest that we helped organize at NOCA, a local arts high school. Once the songs are completed by May 2020, we aim to perform them in as many places as possible. What we need is presenters in this and other parts of the country, especially in areas where citizens are reluctant still to believe in climate change. We need suggestions to make our project and performance not depressing, but hopeful. And we need suggestions on measuring the efficiency of our project, if that's possible. If we get a lot of funding, we would love to include any other artists, choreographers, dancers, projection uh, artists in our performances. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Benjamin Kimmich, Johnny Hoy Wynn, uh, Stephanie Pearl Travers, Michael Sakamoto, and Gerald Castell. Okay, my turn. Hi, I'm Janet Wong, New York Live Arts. The piece is called, thank you, Casting the Vote. And the lead artists are Charlotte Brathwaite, theater artist, and uh, June Cross, filmmaker and journalist. It's a participatory performance event, town hall, and dinner. We'll feed you. And uh, it is ultimately about embodying, deliberating, practicing democracy through persistence, resistance, joy, and forward action. So the creative team will work with a local group of young people. And in New York, it's the Impact Theater in Harlem and, uh, to create and device work. And they will lead the audience through the whole process, through ritual, music, dance, spoken word, shared per sharing pertinent information, bring in uh, guest speakers, scholars, artists, and while eating. And uh, we'll follow it by uh, dividing to groups to, to dis discuss and debate and devise forward action. And uh, we are planning to do a series of them in New York. There are two versions. One is bring the creative team to work with a local group. And the second one is to bring a DIY version, which they're creating. Come talk to me. I'm not on Grindr. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, good morning, y'all. My name is Johnny Wee Wing, or Win, to make it easy if you don't got tones like winning. I'm a uh, multidisciplinary performance artist and dancer. So the new work I'm creating is uh, Model Without a Minority. It's a solo experimental dance work that's looking at dissecting, subverting, disrupting narratives of emasculation and decentralization uh, connected to the Asian male body by centering the Asian male body on stage. 
So I was just bringing to light conversations around how we assign social value and desire to racialize and gendered bodies. My background is multivaried, contemporary dance, modern dance, street dance, voguing. And just looking to bring that um, all to stage and just imagine uh, Asian masculinity that you know, is rooted in our ancestors and histories of resilience and that's free of just all the contemporary bullshit and just also looking at myself at how I've played into, you know, white patriarchal structures and toxic masculinity in my own experiences. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, my name is Stephanie Pearl. Uh, this is my first time at this conference. This is a really amazing room to be in. So um, I'm here to represent my project. Uh, it's called 912 Julia Street. Um, about a year and a half ago, someone, a, a, a bar patron of mine, I bartend, uh, gave me the key to 912 Julia Street and said, go ahead and use this for your project. Um, I also have an arts magazine that I do here locally in town called The Iron Lattice. Um, the first art show I did there was last August with Level Collective. Uh, since then, um, I've worked with and collaborated with over 100 artists at this address. Um, it's been a really incredible experience. It's also been a lot of work. Um, I have a full-time job on top of doing this. Uh, 912 Julia Street is just about having a very artist-centered space. I am in the arts district and I've in a million years, but I imagine having 3,400 square feet in such a desirable location. Um, it's been magic. I've watched that transform other people's uh, like practices. Um, I've done solo shows with artists. Uh, all of those things. Um, what I'm looking for is just hands and help. Um, I would love to keep 912 in the community. Uh, if you're a local artist, uh, I'm looking for administrative help, development help, all of those things. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Akio Kimmich. I'm the senior producer at Performance Space New York in the East Village in New York City. Um, the first thing I'd like to share with you all is um, something I'm just mostly looking for thought partners on. In 2020, Performance Space is um, giving over our entire calendar year budget, keys, and wages to two, three artists and two artist collectives to help us try to break down and destabilize the zeitgeist of art production and hopefully create some kind of collaborative relationship between institution and artists. Um, looking forward to 2021. I'm looking for co-commissioners, also thought partners interested in sort of a very broad working provocation, which is around specifically theater and working with a small number of theater artists over the season who are interested in uh, questioning the economies and the pipeline that gen uh, generally drive theater making and the aesthetics, which are usually commercially driven and also inviting artist-driven forward modeling for how institutions can support the creation of contemporary theater today. Um, my email is in the app. Ben Kimmich, Performance Space New York. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm Gerald Cassell. I am a dancer, performance maker, and professor based in San Francisco, California. And I'm making a piece called Not About Race Dance, not About Race Dance is a collaborative choreographic response to the predominance of whiteness in U.S. postmodern dance. The title cites Neil Greenberg's Not About AIDS Dance and its tactics to call attention to the unacknowledged racial politics in dance, particularly how whiteness has dominated the structures and privileges of modern dance. Whiteness is the not race that my work exposes as a dominant social structure. Beyond the evening length work, the project also involves long table discussions on race, which we've been piloting in the Bay Area through a community engagement piece called Dancing Around Race. We've gratefully received an NDP production grant, so there's touring subsidy available. We're also in discussion with several touring sites and residency centers, and we'd love to partner with you to bring this project to your community. The premiere uh, is in September 2020 at Counterpulse. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Isabel Cruz, Meg Foley, Michelle Grant Murray, Emily Johnson, and Dan Fruit. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Michael Sakamoto. I'm primarily here as a presenter this year uh, outside of my normal role as an artist. Um, so, this is my 60 seconds for that. Uh, George slash Michael explores the embodied legacies of ballet and butoh dance and the real and imagined. Lives of its lead performers, George de la Pena and myself, Michael Sakamoto. So, if you want to see 
a former ABT star perform what Giselle's Albrecht looks like after the 40 years he should have been danced to death by the Willies, or if you want to see an Asian American Buto dancer reclaim abjectness in the dance world by colorizing Petrushka, this show's for you. We unpack and model not only allyship, but primarily the messy process of coming to terms with one's lifelong privilege that we don't have any answers for. Um, we are assembling a group of female trans and POC collaborators uh, to basically uh, challenge and subvert everything that George and I bring to the show. Um, we have a work in progress coming in Boston in the spring. Uh, we're looking for co-commissioning development and tour partners, but especially dance studio and local engagement partners, advocacy organizations to give voice to all of the bodies that are not welcome in those worlds. Thank you. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Meg. Um, I'm here to talk, Meg Foley, I live in Philadelphia. I'm here to talk about Blood Baby, and you're very hard to see. Um, Blood Baby is an iterative performance and research project. Uh, it explores my experience of queer motherhood, somatic drag, gender performance, and the bodily resonance of the various daily drags um, that we wear and the navigation of their switching. Uh, it's a reorientation towards sensation, and it's an embrace of the body as a sacred site, bloody, sweaty, and hot gay sex, and momhood. <laughs> sexy moms. <laughs> sexy gay moms, sexy gay parents. Um, it's a collaboration with Michelle Steinwald and Sylvan Oswald, who are working with me as a really brilliant oversight committee. And they live in LA and Minneapolis, respectively. So I'm looking for residency and workshop opportunities in 2020 and early 2021 to develop this project. It, when I say iterative, it'll be discrete, intimate performances in various forms. I think that's it. And local queer performers in the workshopping. And this is my shirt, Alice in the <laughs> Hey, I'm Dan Fruit. Hi, I'm Natalie Communis, and I am one of the collaborative ensemble members of Dan Fruit and Company. We are based in Los Angeles. We are beginning work on an evening of three short plays with a working title of Arms Around America. So the plays are based on the oral histories of families around the country whose lives have been shaped in some way by guns. We can do several advanced site visits over the course of a couple of years of development at zero or minimal cost to the presenter. You heard that right. During these visits, we develop community partnerships and long-term relationships with community stakeholders and the families we work with. We develop the scripts in Los Angeles in full consultation with the families themselves. The plays will be produced as a podcast season as well as live radio plays in uh, premiering in late 2023. Miami Light Project is commissioning the work and we're partnering with, in Miami, with Guitars Over Guns, Path to Hip Hop, and Touching Miami with Love. We have a possible co-commissioner in LA and we're looking for at least one more co-commissioner, preferably in the middle of the country, preferably somewhere rural. Thank you. Danfruit.com. Good morning, how are you? Uh, good, morning. good morning. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Michelle Grant Murray and I'm from Miami, Florida. I am the artistic director of Alujimi Dance Theater, which is a black female company, black and brown female company that talks about the intersectionality of black female bodies with this existence and navigating this world. We're creating a new work that's commissioned by Miami Light Project, trans, that link, Miami Light Project that engages and talks about the black female body and their perspective to water and intersectionality as nurturer, giver, sustainer, navigating everything that we do inside of this world and making it work forever and always. We're looking for um, composers. I'm looking for a tour. I'm looking for a residency that pays. We need to be paid. We need to pay people. And um, that's about it. If you want to see me, please do. I'm friendly and open. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on deck is Tio Castellanos, Mara Garcia, Annie Arnaud, Leilani Chan, and Andre Zachary. Hi, everybody. 
I'm Emily Johnson, and I endorse Christina Wong. <laughs> um, two things. One is, with many dear and brilliant people, I'm part of a consortium building a global First Nations performance network. So if you are a First Nations performance artist and or an ally working to become an accomplice, come speak with either me or Ed Bourgeois here uh, this weekend. Second, I'm finally making another new dance piece. Um, it's called Being Future Being. For the last 15 years, I've visioned better futures with, I tend to exaggerate, but I really think a couple thousand people. Um, and that process has been um, full of possibility, and now I want all of that possibility to be here now. I want our better future now. Um, so I'm working with um, the architecture of the overflow. I don't really know what that means quite yet, but it has to deal with um, moving from stage out to the world and making sure that the overflow of hope and anger and work is about joy and liberation. All right. Good morning. My name is Teo Castellanos. I am artistic director of uh, Teo Castellanos D Projects and Combat Hippies and Miami Light Project Board uh, President. And we are, the Combat Hippies, uh, we are currently touring Amal, which was uh, originally commissioned by MDC Live Arts and supported by NPN Creation Fund, along with uh, Macla and Su Teatro, also supported by Knight Foundation, NIFA Touring Subsidy and Development and Touring, uh, NET, Arts to Action, MAP Fund, among others. Amal examines the impact of war with equal parts humor and urgency. It, it explores a quest for meaning purpose and identity sought through enlisting in the military and shares the unifying experiences of combatants and non-combatants as people of color. Amal relays stories of veterans, refugees, civilians, adjustments to life after war. This all Puerto Rican theater company places Puerto Rico's colonial status, cultural and military heritage center stage. Uh, and it is driven by an original Afro Rican punk soundtrack Played by black and brown people will be at La Mama January 9th and 10th. Whee! Uh, she only got the woo, nui dai da wudo, anigilonghi digi yangwi. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Maura Garcia. I'm Cherokee and Madame Mesquite. I'm a dancer, a choreographer, and the artistic director of Maura Garcia Dance. I create and perform contemporary indigenous dance to uplift our cultural values and to connect with native people, with indigenous people throughout the world and with all human beings in general. Um, I'm here to talk about Si Aniwoni. They are still talking. The first iteration premiered at the Dance Center in Vancouver in BC. Um, I'll, it'll show at January 10th, uh, LA Studio as part of APAP. And the, it's a dance work about our connection to our ancestors, our bodies, our flesh, are made of from everything that they were. So as I talk, they're talking, and they are still talking. And I'm looking for development support uh, for commissioning partners and space to bring together other dancers, other Cherokee people who may not have a dance experience, and Cherokee language specialists, so that we can get in the same place to expand the work to include Cherokee language translated into movement and choreography. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, y'all. I'm Annie Arnold, Artistic Director of Open Dance Project in Houston, Texas. And we've got All the Devils Are Here, A Tempest in the Galapagos in the works right now. This is a co-commission by Diverse Works in Houston and Studio 5 Performing Arts in Evanston, Illinois, and supported by an NPN Creation Fund. Thank you, NPN and co-commissioners. The piece collides Shakespeare's The Tempest with the true story of an unsolved murder in the Galapagos in 1929. This immersive dance theater performance follows the failed attempts of a nihilist couple, a conservative family, and a baroness and her two gay lovers to escape the world of man on the uninhabited island of Floriana. Their conflicting visions of paradise, sexual and moral rightness, colonial instincts, and social and psychological demons lead to disaster and provide a rich canvas for a poignant examination of basic human rights, social justice, and power structures. The work is dirty, gritty, sweaty, intimate, athletic, 
surprising, thoroughly researched, and smart. And we're looking for presenting partners. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Andre Zachary. I'm the artistic director of Renegade Performance Group based in Brooklyn, New York. I am uh, coming with um, uh, uh, my work, Untamed Space, which is an Afrofuturist performance, uh, full-length work uh, considering marooning in the 21st century and the creation of an African diaspora through dance performance, technology, uh, and um, consideration on uh, cultural residue. We had a uh, premiere and commissioned by Dance Space Project in 2017. We've since toured with support through uh, NPN at the Wexner Center of the Arts in Columbus, Ohio, in, collaborate, in partnership with the King Arts Complex. We're looking for continued touring and community workshops and also workshops with uh, black communities on the intersection of technology, um, future thought, and uh, effects of gentrification and continue resistance uh, to build and sustain a life uh, beyond, uh, beyond the 21st century um, for their own cultural heritage. So you can come at me um, at any time at the conference. We also are presenting at APAP January 13th at City Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. On deck, we have Mary Prescott, Philip Byther, Delami Hansen, Shireen Azab, and Spirit McIntyre. Aloha kako. Uh, my name is Leilani Chan, and I am here uh, with the hat on of Vice President of the Kata Board, with the, which is the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. And we'd like to announce... And I'm Mina Natrajan, and I'm also on the board of Kata. And we'd like to announce our Confest 2020. It is in Hawaii, so all of you are invited. And it is on August 7th to the 16th, 2020. The theme of the conference is Ku'u Aina, Ku'u Pico, Ku'u Kahua. Return to the source. We are super excited to announce that we have extended the proposal deadline. If you would like to propose a performance, a stage reading, a panel, uh, or you actually kind of don't know yet, but you have an idea and you want to put it in the mix and we'll figure it out, please send in proposals through December 31st. December 31st. And also, if you haven't noticed, we are centering the voices of Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders in addition to Asian American artists. So please encourage everyone you know to apply. We want to incorporate as many people as possible. And um, talk to any one of us. There's four, four board members here, Joni's in the audience, and the three of us. Apply, 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 and pre-register, and come. Just come. Please come. Everyone is welcome. You can pre-register for $50 right now online. Kata.net. Hello. Um, my name is D. Lammy Hansen. D. Period. Lammy Hansen. Everybody calls me Lammy. Um, I am based in New Orleans as we speak right now, but I am moving to Chicago next, uh, in the next month. I am a visual artist that has been doing um, my work for about 30 years, but in the last three years, I've been doing metal point art, which is drawing people of color and women in precious metals. And the reason why I am so entranced in this is because I um, believe that we wear things to make us look good, but this is us actually being created in the precious metals that make us feel good about who we are. So this is the reason why I do I do it in large scale. I have a residency that I'm uh, finishing at the end of the month um, at the uh, Arts Council of New Orleans Salon at Canal Street. Um, and it's in the, um, the Mall Canal Place, second floor next to Anthropology. If you're interested, please stop by. D. Lammy Hansen. Thank you. Bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Shireen Azab. I am the co-director of Detroit-based theater company, A Host of People. Um, and we have a new project that just premiered that, that was a NIFA 2019 National Theater Project awardee. So there's 
touring funds available for it. Um, it is called Cleopatra Boy. It is a theatrical thought experiment that uses the historical figure of Cleopatra to illustrate how women, POC, and LGBTQIA plus individuals in positions of power have their own images and histories manipulated by mostly straight white men, resulting in false narratives and misrepresentations in order for their dominant system to retain control and for their own personal gains. Um, that uh, is, we look at Shakespeare and Shaw and uh, a lot of the Western representations and sort of evaluate how that has been happening since the Roman Empire and continues to happen today. Um, so we're looking for presenting partners for that. We are also developing a companion piece called Death of Cleopatra that will premiere at the Arab American Museum. Talk to me about both. Thank you so much. I need to do this because I'm very short. I can't be seen behind the podium. Um, my name is Mary Prescott. I'm an interdisciplinary artist, composer, and pianist based between Minneapolis and New York. I'm a resident artist at Roulette in Brooklyn and Lanesboro Arts in Minnesota. Um, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, the piece that I'm working on right now is called Tida. It's my middle name. It means daughter in Thai. And um, it's about my shifting cultural identity investigated through my maternal Thai ancestry um, and my mother's experience as an immigrant raising a biracial family in Minnesota. Um, it has music, movement, and language. Uh, it was supported by the NPN Creation and Development Fund for 2019 um, and with co-commissioners Living Arts in Tulsa and Public Functionary in Minneapolis. And I am looking for residencies, commissioners, and presenters for the 2021 and 22 season. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's great to be back here at NPN. I'm Philip Beither from the Walker Arts Center. And I want to invite you to come on February 27th uh, to Minneapolis to be part of Faye Driscoll's first major museum exhibition uh, tied to her Thank You for Coming trilogy that you heard about from George Lug. Um, it's part of a three-year Mellon Foundation supported interdisciplinary initiative that's disrupted the way that we've historically worked at the Walker, breaking down the barriers between visual art and performing art departments, um, allowing us to learn from each other and better serve artists whose work no longer fit into defined disciplinary boundaries. The project has supported work by Maria Hassabi, Theaster Gates, Laura Provost, Meg Stewart, Marie, uh, Rabia More, and Jason Moran, among others. Um, and it's really changing how we produce, mount, acquire, uh, present work, and archive it. Um, all of the results can be found. We just put up online, uh, just Google interdisciplinary initiative, Walker Art, and we'd love to uh, be in conversation with anyone else who's working at breaking down barriers between disciplines. Thanks. You are worthy, you matter, you matter. We are sacred, we are worthy, we matter, we matter. So I'm Spirit McIntyre, I live here in New Orleans, and I'm looking to expand my artistic capacity and my reach um, by examining ritual, ancestral worship, live music, trans and gender non-conformingness, healing art practices, pleasure practices, grief work. We are all grieving. I love my grievers. I love being in the grief club. Um, and I need funding. I need funding resources. I need artist residencies to help me just explore and, you know, just like really come into my own as an artist. And sometimes it's like you just don't know. I feel like there's so many resources and avenues out there that I just don't know about. And I'm okay saying, I don't know, please, please, please help me. So please reach out. I have cards. Um, I'm approachable uh, when I want to be, and I want to be approachable with you. So let's connect. Thank you. You are sacred. You are worthy. Thank you. So next on deck, uh, we have Aurora Neeland, Dylan Irwegas, Trevor C. Miles, Marianne Osborne, and Isabel Cruz.
Is that me now? Okay. Hello, I'm Aurora Neeland. I have just come from the dentist, so I am numb on half of my tongue. Um, I apologize for the stumbling words. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm presenting a piece. I'm a musician here in New Orleans, a local musician. Uh, I work a lot with local artists, and then I also um, am trying to broaden the representation of what it means to experience sound in music um, locally. And so I'm presenting a piece, I'm remounting a piece here at the CAC in conjunction with Goat in the Road Theater. It's really hard to talk with a numb tongue. Um, it's going up in April. It's called Kind Tune Man Kind. It takes place in that large 80-foot warehouse space. Um, it features uh, four incredible musicians who are women and non-binary. Um, it's all my original music, and we're looking for future presenters. Um, and there'll be eight, seven performances at the CAC. Come, I have cards. Come find me when my tongue is not numb. Hello. Um, my name is Dylan Iruegas, and for our captioner and our interpreter, that is D I L L O N Y R U E G. AS. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his, um, or el, si hablas español. Um, and I am the fellow for HowlRound. Um, <laughs> if you have noticed, we have been live streaming. Um, and so this is kind of a call. We are a knowledge-based theater commons. And so we are reliant on all of you and your knowledge. And we want to share that with everyone. So if we would love for all of you to contribute. Um, we have our journal, uh, we have live streaming of different events, performances, we have the world theater map, um, and so much more. So go howlround.com for more information. And then I'm going to do a personal plug. Um, I also, uh, along with my friend uh, Jesse O'Rear, he's a doctoral candidate at the University of Texas at Austin, um, we do uh, facilitate workshops for trans and gender expanded performers. Um, <laughs> about.me slash Dylan Uegas. Find out more. Imposter. Oh. You dance, but you don't dance dance. Imposter. Black boy, black boy, little black boy. Why do you talk so white? Self-taught, started moving at 17. Didn't know what dance was, but I knew the beat had a way of making me jump. <laughs> I knew with dance, I could create new societies, change what I see around me, and so I jump everyone. 2020, I wanna jump with you. Please bring me to your city. Trevor C. Miles is the name from Pittsburgh. I had so much fun with y'all last year in Pittsburgh. And I have a host of one-man shows, the TM Solo Stage Series, all different themes. Identity, abuse, sexual abuse, religion. So I can bring whatever piece is appropriate for your space. I've been pleased to perform with some of you in the past. But 2020 needs to be a little bit bigger, y'all. Come on. When we get me on stage, I am the one. But I also have a background in advertising, public relations, so I do grant writing and all those things as well. I love energy exchange, so let's do that. Let's exchange energy. Thank you. And lastly, if we have Nigel Brown or Anastasia here, um, please get on deck. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for hanging in with everything. This is an amazing experience and opportunity to hear about artists. And my name is Marianne Osborne. I'm the program manager at CD Forum in Seattle, Washington. And CD, and I'm here to talk about a show we co-produced with an amazing artist. Um, Randy is a dancer, choreographer, actor, and activist. And Randy, um, we co-produced a show with Randy called Queen Street. And Randy would love to take Queen Street out on the road. Let me tell you a little bit about the amazing show. We had such a great one. Queen Street is a physicalized experience through the lens of queer, trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. 
and it's a full-length evening dance show highlighting the importance of centering intersectionality by giving audiences a peek inside the physical, mental, and spiritual transformation of its performers. The thing about the show is when Randy brings the show to your town, city, community, uh, Randy would like to work with artists in your area to tell their own stories. You can find out more about Randy at therandy4.com or you can talk to Sharon, Danny, Nina, or myself uh, with CD Forum. We thank you and check out Queen Street with Randy Ford. Bye. Hi, good morning. We thought this started at 11, so thank you for holding space for me today. <laughs> um, but my name is Anastasia Narajos. That's Nigel Brown. Um, we are with Walkabout Theater Company based in Chicago, Illinois. We are a laboratory device theater company with a dedicated ensemble. And we have three shows that we're looking to tour um, and also a training program that we're hoping to share. Our last show was about looking into our own family narratives and finding stories. It turned into an avant-garde family play, working with our international collaborators um, over in India and our voice teacher in Canada. So we're looking to tour those shows. Um, I'm also an individual artist, and we're at a place in our theater company where we're in a transition and we're looking to evolve our practices and restructure our hierarchy model. Um, so I'm looking as an individual performer or teaching artist or collaborator to travel and um, explore and work with different theater companies so hire me as a performer or an artist, and also co come talk to us about booking our shows. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone who signed up already, but we did not call? Be honest. Okay, great, thank you. I'm not blinding anybody with my sequins today. It was actually hard to see myself yesterday. Um, <laughs> Catherine, thank you so much for emceeing us. <laughs> I love In the Works. It's so weird, um, and it's so great. <laughs> the, just the, the different variety of things that you see in these 60-second performances. Um, it's one of my favorite things at the conference. Um, this wonderful weirdness is, um, is, is due in large part to some incredible folks who support NPN. Um, I know that people always like to say that their funders are not just funders, they're partners. Um, in this case, I think it really is true. And particularly, um, you know, as NPN has gone through a lot of changes in the last three years, to have the support and the wisdom and the advocacy of incredible funding partners um, has made that work possible. Um, it has made um, change happen in a hopeful space and less terrifying space. Um, and that's a really extraordinary thing. Um, so I wanna say a big thank you to the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, the Andrew Mellon Foundation, the Cerdna Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the Lambent Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts who have been longtime supporters of ours. Um, and also thanks to some local folks who've joined us this year specifically to support the conference. Um, Barrios, Kingsdorf, and Caste, those are our lawyers. They're pretty cool, they gave us some money. Um, the Hellas Foundation, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation, Louisiana Office of Cultural Development. And as I mentioned earlier, Alternate Roots has specifically supported um, centering First Peoples here at our conference this year. And last but not least, Tito's Vodka. So every go time you go to the Sweet Suite and it's just loaded up with booze, you can thank Tito's for that. Um, we also have lots of generous supporters of individuals that are here in this room and also around the country. Um, I mentioned yesterday the opportunity to contribute to the Carol B. Bell Scholarship Fund. Some folks have already done that. Thank you so much. Um, that will allow us to provide leadership opportunities for artists and culture bearers of color from New Orleans from now, hopefully forever. Um, so thank you to all of our supporters for making this happen. The more money we get, the more we give. That's just good math. Thank you. Um, and then before we break, I just want to give a couple of announcements. It's my favorite part. Um, 